Let me give you an example of something that we've been working on. We also, in our company, we do a fair amount of deep learning uh, research. Let me give you an example of what's actually happening here. Basically, this, this network in the middle, this is just an articulation of the network, it's called an autoencoder. We're, we're asking this network, we're asking this network, if we gave it a distorted image of that, a noisy image of that, that it has to learn how to generate th that image, the beautiful image, from that noisy image. The way that it has to do that, it has to figure out how to recognize the important features and eventually generate it automatically. Now, one of the areas we've applied this to is ray tracing. Ray tracing, as you know, is computationally incredibly intensive following photons around as we, as we try to regenerate an image is very computationally intensive. And so one of the things that we've, we decided to do is what happens if we were to teach a network to fill in the spots that we haven't rendered yet, okay? To generate some of it and to automatically infer or to use artificial intelligence to decide what to fill it in with. And so let's take a look at that. This is um, our ray tracer with deep learning. On the left, let's see, on the left here is without deep learning, on the right is with deep learning. Notice how noisy it remains for some time. With deep learning, it figured out, based on the surrounding things that it has already rendered, and based on recognizing what objects look like, what paint looks like, what glass looks like, it's learned those things, and it's selected the right, picture, the, selected the right colors to fill it in with, all by itself. And as a result, you're able to take this noisy image and turn it into a beautiful image. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> the implication is actually quite amazing. We can now get distorted input from the sky, uh, from the internet, and somehow we could have a network running here that regenerates what it's likely to be, okay? Autoencoders, de using deep learning for computer graphics. That's great, thanks guys. Now this particular image, let's take a look at this. This is the full scene, yeah, let me not forget this. This is now the full scene. Now let's do the ult ultimate stunt, let's go outside. And just like that, it fills it in. And it, fill it recognizes that it's a reflection of trees, and it renders a reflection of trees. Okay, fantastic, thank you. <laughs> Using deep learning for ray tracing. The AI revolution is well on its way. It started with the Big Bang in 2012, but since then it has grown incredibly. There's just amazing things that are happening. If you take a look at the major conferences, NIPS, ICML, CVPR, and ICLR, the attendees has doubled in two years. It's only doubled in two years because there are li limitations in physical space. The number of students who want to learn deep learning has 10 x in two years on Udacity. The number one most popular course on Stanford, at Stanford, is CS229, Introduction to Machine Learning. The most popular course, you would have thought home, home ec was, but it, the most popular course is, is not, is not uh, being a movie critic anymore. It's machine learning. And in fact, I understand that it's not just engineers, not computer scientists, but it's psychologists, it's biologists, it's oceanographers, it's basically everybody. Deep learning has democratized computing. Not everybody knows how to program, but everybody has data. Everybody has their own data. And they could use that data now, use the experience of their domain, the experience of their career, the experience of their professionals, professions, and teach a computer how to automate their work. So teaching computers is something that I think everybody can do. We have democratized computing. And lastly, the number of startups has just have been explosive. There are now 10 times as much investment in AI companies since four years ago. There's no question we're seeing explosive growth. Our strategy, our strategy here at NVIDIA 
is to, number one, create the most productive platform for deep learning. It starts with, of course, building great GPUs, but building great systems and system softwares and all the middleware that goes with it. The invention of QDNN so that we containerized, we turned into a library the really complicated numerics and mathematical pro uh, processing of all of the layers, the convolution layers, the activation layers, the pooling layers, all of those complicated layers into a easy to use library has been completely revolutionary. We've kept on going. There's all kinds of libraries that we've created now for the deep learning SDK that's available to framework designers and deep learning engineers all over the world. We work with every single one of the framework providers in the world. We have engineers that are working with each and every one of them so that we can integrate and optimize and make as wonderful as possible and as productive as possible these complicated frameworks which are basically high performance computing software stacks to run on NVIDIA GPUs. Every single framework on the planet supports CUDA. Every single framework on the planet supports NVIDIA GPUs, and it doesn't matter which one you use. They, some of them have their own special characteristics. Some of them are better for research. Some of them are better for production. Some of them are better for, for cloud. Some of them are better for enterprise. Some of them are better for uh, the highest possible performance. Some of them are better for flexibility. There are so many different frameworks, and we support them all. We also work with the system companies to make sure that irrespective of how you would like to access a high performance computer, whether you would like to build it yourself by going to the store and buying yourself a GeForce Titan X, or buying a fully integrated server from one of the world's large OEMs, our partners HP, Dell, and IBM, Cisco, and Lenovo, or you would like to provision it in the cloud. One of the best ways to enjoy deep learning is for someone else to build this incredibly complicated supercomputer on your behalf. And so we've worked with all of the cl cloud providers, and at this point, every single cloud company in the world has NVIDIA GPUs provisioned in the cloud. And so with this strategy, we have accelerated the capability of deep learning, made it compatible with literally every single framework on the planet, and made it available to you however you would like to access it. But we didn't stop there. There are several things that we're doing. Because we realize what an important computing revolution this is, and that we can't just make the computers for it, that we have to understand how deep learning works and how AI, how AI will impact society, Bill Daly and our NVIDIA research is doing basic research in deep learning. We also have applied research. I showed you one example of our applied research. We're doing applied research in a whole bunch of areas. I'll talk about some of them today. We also partner with the world's top AI laboratories, whether it's University of Toronto or Stanford or Berkeley or Oxford or Harvard or MIT or um, uh, the, the uh, uh, Tsinghua University or the University of Tokyo. We have some 20 some odd universities that we work with around the world where the greatest, the brightest minds in artificial intelligence are supported and working directly with us so that we can advance the future of computing together. We also have dedicated teams that are working with each one of the vertical industries. I already mentioned the number of healthcare companies that are here. We work with enterprise, we work with internet service providers so that we can make this computing platform available to all. One of the most important programs that we have in the company is called Inception. And many of them, many of you in the audience are part of this program. There are 1,300 startups that we're working with today that are focused on deep learning. You need access to early access to technology. You need access to resources. You need access maybe to expertise. You need access to market exposure. Sometimes you need access to funding. We have access and we provide all of that as part of Inception. 1,300 companies came out of nowhere. This program is literally 18 months old. There are all kinds of great companies here. Deep Genomics and Healthcare, Zebra and Healthcare, Medical Imaging. We have, um, in, uh, we have uh, Financial Services, FinTech. We have Retail and Etail. Uh, there's Autonomous Machines, amazing, cool autonomous machines. Where we only talk about self-driving cars a lot. Zooks has a self-driving 
a taxi that they're building. There's Drive AI, who's building a software stack on top of Drive PX. Amazing companies out there. Blue River is using autonomous machines to make it easier for farmers to fertilize their fields. One particular company that I want to mention that's really, really cool, and it's, it's, a, it's a company that is, um, in fact, not working on deep learning. It's just the technology that they, they create is so vital to almost everybody who's working in big data. And it's a company called MapD. Uh, Todd Mostek's company uh, was the world's first to create basically a database engine on top of GPUs. And he's been working on this for quite a few years. And he just recently open sourced MapD. You should all take a look at it. It's just completely amazing to be able to access databases so large, completely in memory, and be able to interact with it, create graphs out of it, query it with AI, visualize it all in real time. Completely revolutionary stuff. So 1,300 startups in inception. And um, we're just delighted and really, really proud of all of them. Let's give them a round of applause. Deep learning and enterprise. SAP is one of the world's largest enterprise software companies. And recently, they re reached out to us and wanted to partner with us on deep learning. And our two engineering teams have been working together on a new product that is just super, super cool. It's called Brand Impact. And the way that this works is this. There are videos being shown to, by advertisers. And, um, uh, and they spend some $60 billion a year advertising their brands and adver advertising products. But they really have no idea how effective they are. So let me run this video for you, and you get a sense for it. SAP Brand Impact is a fully automated and scalable video analytics service for brands, media agencies, and media production companies. Detected brand assets are framed in the video and correspond to the lines in the panel below. It allows interactive review of original video footage overlaid with detections. In the summary view, you get reports on brand exposure duration and size on the screen. In the detailed view, you get indication of each brand's screen coverage and frequency of exposure graph. SAP Brand Impact Solution, accelerated by NVIDIA, enables customers to measure the impact of brand exposure on their business performance. It makes so much sense. It makes so much sense for SAP to be working on deep learning. And the reason for that is this. You guys know that some 80% of the world's commerce is, flows through the SAP ERP system. Almost 90% of the world's largest enterprises have their databases all uh, within the, the uh, SAP uh, ERP system. So they're sitting on a pile of data. Companies who are using SAP are sitting on a pile of data. If we could figure out a way to use AI so that we could harvest, so that we could, f we could find insight in that dark matter, it would be incredibly valuable. It's one of the reasons why we partnered up with, with SAP and the results of This is the first results of it, and you're going to see a lot more to come. Well, there's so many different startups that are emerging all over the world. But the part of it that's really, so you're seeing startups that are emerging, number of applications is exploding, the number of industries that are being touched by this, and simultaneously, simultaneously, the, com the complexity of the models are exploding. I mean, this is Microsoft's ResNet, the groundbreaking work that achieves superhuman levels, has seven sextillion operations, seven exaflops. Okay, seven exaflops. Um, just to give you a, a sense, if you took all of the world's fastest supercomputers, all top 500 of them, you put them all together, and you cause, you, if you could figure out a way to cause them to operate for one second together, that is one exaflops. So what this network, this model that Microsoft created, called the ResNet, really, really super deep, the deepest network at the time, it would take seven seconds Seven seconds for every single supercomputer on the planet, the ones, all the ones in the United States, all the ones in China, all the ones in Europe, you gang them all together, it would take seven seconds to process this network. Okay, that's how much operation is inside. Very few of us think about the word sextillion every day. These are big numbers. These are a whole bunch of numbers, and that is what a program looks like in the future. 
Well, the program is getting larger and larger. Baidu has, has a, a, a network, a model, that's 20 exaflops large with 300 million numbers inside it. And that's called Deep Speech 2. And Google's recent neural machine translator that does multi-language translation requires 105 exaflops. The amount of computation necessary is just incredible. In fact, it would take approximately one server, one CPU-only server, two years to run through this network one time. This is the ultimate high-performance computing problem. And that's one of the reasons why we have to continue to push the, li the living daylights out of computing. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce you now to the next chap chapter of computing, the next level of computing.